Welcome to the market of the moment, week of August 8, 2022. Michael Oldham with Chris Madrid. What's hey, up? Hey. hey, man. So good to be here. So good to be here. Always, always good to be here on a Thursday. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what is ahead for the rest of 2022. Um, we have talked about we're you know in an inflationary period now, heading into a recession. If not, you know, what does that look like for real estate? Uh, Chris talked a little bit earlier. Here is um, July, as of July 2022. These are, you know, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, uh, Mortgage Bank Association, and at Mortgage Bank Associations, and then our National Association, oh, and those National Association of Realtors, all making their mortgage rate projections, uh, predictions for the rest of the year. Uh, and even moving into 2023, first, second, and third quarter. So as you can see, they're all saying they're basically going to stay somewhere in the mid to low fives and maybe dip down into the high fours. But for the most part, we're going to be most likely in those low fives to mid fives based on the projections from all of these experts, none of which are on CNBC, CNN, or Fox. Absolutely. So there could be a potential silver lining for the market. Um, you know, as we stabilize mortgage rates, inventory is rising in the housing market. So this should bring some of those buyers back to the market during the second half of the year that have been sitting uh, on the sidelines. Obviously, yes. some are going to still sit on the sidelines um, because they think, you know, the grass is still going to get greener. Um, but as these interest rates tick down into the high fours, um, as a buyer, I would probably really start uh, looking at, you know, trying to lock and get into something. Absolutely. Uh, so home price forecast for 2022, as those mortgage rates are coming down, um, so are some of your price forecasts. Um, so the average of all forecasts show a 10.3%. Uh, forecast for home prices dropping all the way down to your mortgage banking associations at 2.7 percent so um I think they, they had i mean that's clear i don't, I don't know where that number came from but <laughs> yeah why yeah. would they be so different than yeah i'm like that's got to be I don't, anyway yeah maybe somebody put the wrong uh <laughs> maybe that was supposed to be the wrong data or something but yeah i'm like what 2.7 there's no way anyway so uh, from Mark Zandi, chief economist of Moody's Analytics, I don't think national housing prices will decline in a meaningful way, but there will be some price declines across the country. So as Chris uh, showed in, we showed in the earlier slide uh, of national kind of housing report, depending on what part of the country you're in is going to kind of depend on how much prices decline, if they level out, you know. Um, we are seeing price reductions, you know, now here in Dallas, we had more price reductions than new listings this week. Um, so buyers, I think, are a little more patient than they were a couple months ago. But it does not mean that prices are going to suddenly drop and reduce. Um, personally, yeah. I feel like we've talked about this before, too. You've got a bunch of sellers that have tremendous amount of equity in their house so they know what they want out of it yeah. and you don't have to sell it because they have they can sit on it a year and make payments and still have equity even while they're living in their other house but then you've got a set of buyers over here that's only going to pay so much um and there seems to be about a 25 to thirty thousand dollar gap between these two groups of people right now I uh, think obviously with time, the sellers are going to ease up, the buyers are going to ease up and we're going to meet and the market's going to open back up a little bit. But yeah, um, Existing home sales, this is a seemingly, seasonally adjusted annual rates in millions. This is from the National Association of Realtors. So you can see that um, home sales, existing home sales are tracking pretty much along um, what our normal markets would be like in 17, 18, 19, uh, 2020, 
uh, it started going up because of the pandemic. 2021, definitely bouncing off of the pandemic. And now um, in 2022, we're getting back to that 5.1, 5.3, 5.5, you know, region, which is yep. basically what's been kind of the static and the norm. So, um, so I guess this chart tells me that homes are still selling just like they have been selling for um, the previous five years. If you take out these little outliers of the pandemic and, you know, 2021 was just a historical real estate year that probably won't be seen again for a while. Yeah. Uh, total home sales forecast in the millions. Freddie Max, um, I know their January 20, uh, their January forecast was at 6.9. They've adjusted that to a six. Um, Fannie Mae was at 6.8. They've adjusted to 5.8. And then the MBA Mortgage Bank Association, they were at 7.3 and they've adjusted to 6.4. So I don't really understand how they can forecast this so high. And then their other forecast was, was so much lower, but that yep. was really a data glitch as Chris said. So once again, um, you're basically seeing, you know, they're still predicting uh, the sales forecast to keep up with basically what they're predicting. It did drop a little bit, but nothing significant to me. Three reasons why to buy a home today. Uh, first of all, there's fewer multiple offer scenarios out in the market. Um, you know, two months ago, you called on a listing and they already had offers. You call seven days after it's been listed now and they're still, <laughs> they're still taking them. So, yep. <clears throat> and this is shown by these numbers in April, 2022, uh, you had 5.5 offers on average that dropped to 4.2 in May and it's down to 3.4 in June. And I'd say in July, it's lower than that. And getting into August, it's probably lower than that. Uh, it's probably, you know, 1.5 or something right now. Um, if I was to take an educated guess, uh, fewer homes selling above asking price. So if you're a buyer and you were dreading that, um, multiple offer situation where you were going to have to pay over asking those situations are slowing down. April, it was 61% sold over asking. In May, it was 55%. And in June, we're down to 51% selling over asking. We've seen that in our data um, over the last several months. We've been showing Collin County went from 109.5%, I believe, in May or June down to just over. Uh, yeah. lift price last week so mm -hmm. and then lastly and the reason why it's good uh, possibly to buy a home today is there's just more selection and that's why you also are seeing more days on market because buyers have more to select from they get to look a little more they get to be a yeah. little picture so yeah. our month supply you can see is ticked up from april at 2.2 may to 2.6 and june it's 3.0 and, you know, we're getting very close to that in the Dallas market as well. These were national numbers. So reasons you should buy, uh, there's less competition, which means that you can get the house closer to the asking price. And then lastly, there's just more to choose from. So for a buyer, this is a good time. Yeah, it's a great time. And, and, and rates aren't above 6% like they were <laughs> for that stint that we had, you know, a month and a half ago or whenever it yeah. was, so. Yeah, and if you're working with someone like, someone like Chris, if you're ready to pull the trigger, you literally could uh, get in on a certain day and get get an excellent, excellent rate, possibly, if you're playing the market um, right. Absolutely. And uh, be ready to go. So anyway, that's basically the forecast for the rest of this year. Um, so